Okay, we are back. This is Tech Math 2. We are looking in the Red Book at uh, Chapter 11. And we left off at 11.4, so we are going to pick up at 11.5. Five, we're talking about um, sine waves and it is a sine wave harmonics harmonics and so let's take a look at number 34 on page 489 in the red book so 34 um, they have this y equals 3 sine 5 theta and they just want us to um, input in our calculators uh, around to two decimal places, so hundredths. And uh, they want you to find when theta is 12 degrees and when theta is negative 45 degrees. So you're just inputting that into your calculator. You're typing three sine, and then that comes up. And then you just say five times 12 and parenthesis. Or if you just want to type in 60, do five times 12 in your head and do 60. That's fine. Um, and that'll kick out 2.60. So what this does, let's just do a little reminder of what this does to the graph. The graph is a sine curve. Three changes the amplitude, so it goes up as high as three and down as low as negative three. Five in front of the theta means you get five for the price of one. So five sine waves between zero and 360. Normally, it, they're periodic functions and its period is 360. Um, the cycle is going to change from 360 to, you just um, take 360, oopsie, take 360 and divide it by 5. So every 72 degrees, we would get another sine, sine wave in there. So basically, 5 would be squished in the, in the place of instead of just 1. That's what that five does, all right? So the number in front of theta changes how many cycles there are. Um, but they're not having us do that. They just want us to input this into your calculator. So three is the sine of five times negative 45, and then in parentheses, and then hit enter, and then um, round two places. So that's uh, 2.12. And there we go. All right, so that's 34. Let's take a look at 36. It says uh, using the same equation. Okay, so again, um, this time there's just a little more to it is all, but it's still just plug and chug. So just using your calculators, um, you got y is equal to five times the sine of two theta minus 30 degrees. So if we were to graph this, they didn't ask us to graph it, so we don't have to, but if we were, it was gonna be, the amplitude would be five, you'd get two periods for the price of one, but we'd actually have to factor that out. That would be a little harder to find the shift. The shift would be 15 degrees to the right, not 30 degrees to the right, because you'd have to have the two out front in order to do a graph for this. So if you've played with this and put it in your graphing calculator, it would not be a 30 degree shift to the right, it would be a 15 degree shift to the right. Because before you figure out the shift, you have to factor that out and write it like this. But they don't want us to uh, do that anyway, so we didn't really have to do it. That's only if you wanted to graph it. <clears throat> they don't want to graph it, they just want us to pop it into the calculator uh, when theta is 90 and when theta is um, 220. And they want us to round to, um, to two decimal places oh, again. All right, so we pop in 90, that's 180 minus uh, 30, that's 150. You, you don't even have to do that calculation if you don't want to. You just type in five sine and that that initial you know parenthesis comes up and then you just do two times 90 minus 30 and then end the parenthesis and 
it's going to do five times the sine of 150, but and then hit enter. So you don't really have to show any work for this kind of problem where they're just asking to evaluate. You're just um, typing it in. So that's 2.50. And 220, you do the same thing. So 5 sine of 2 times 220 degrees minus 30 degrees. Type that in. Um, oh, you don't have the degree mark, so you don't need that in your calculator. When you're calculating it, just make sure your mode is in degrees. And then hit Enter, and that's uh, 3.83. Okay, so 11.5 is really just um, plug and chug. They didn't, they didn't really, they talk a little bit about um, what it does with uh, the graph. Let's see here. As we go on, let's, oh yeah, okay. So again, they just want you to say what degree harmonic is it? So that's just uh, how many cycles there are, basically. What is its um, period? So th these are pretty quick, quick questions also. So let's take a look. Add that. Uh, so 42, we have y equals 10 sine 4 theta. And they want to know is a what harmonic? And so the harmonic is dependent on how many cycles happen between zero and 360 degrees. That's normal period. And so this would be a fourth harmonic because the number four is right there. And so the next ones are just the same. Uh, we have the sine of six theta. That would be a sixth harmonic. And they have y equals 1.9 sine 9 theta. Again, it's got nothing to do with amplitude, so the 10 doesn't affect this answer at all. The 1 and the 1.9 has no effect on it. And this is a ninth harmonic. So the harmonic number just um, coincides with the number in front of theta, like how many cycles happen between 0 and 360. All right. Um, oh, and then they want us to go the other way on 43. All right, so that's interesting. Again, it's not extremely difficult. There aren't a lot of steps to it, right? So if they say it's a fourth harmonic with an amplitude of 0.75, they want you to write um, the equation. So. It's just y equals whatever that is, 0.75, the amplitude out front, sine of 4 theta. And that's it. For number 43. Uh, for number 44, oh, wait, 43 part B. A tenth harmonic with amplitude of 8.3. So a tenth harmonic with amplitude of 8.3 is going to just be 8.3 sign and it's a tenth harmonic so 10 theta all right okay on to 11.6 sketching um sketching these pictures so let's look at oh we're just going to do one of these um 50 and so now they're just talking about amplitude so i already let uh, the cat out of the bag on these We've already sketched these a little bit um, previous to this when I was explaining them. So I'm only going to do one problem here. Eleven six. We're just going to look at uh, number fifty. They want you to sketch y equals two sine theta, and so um, halfway points nine tenths points. And then draw the smooth curve. Okay, so look, they want you to put the points in. So they're they're saying just like how I said, like I'm not good at drawing. 
or visualizing. And so it's easier for me to have marked in 80 degrees to 60 degrees like this. And I'll go halfway is 90, halfway between 60 So kind of hit those points on the sign. So sign is zero at zero. It goes all the way up to two at 90 degrees. It comes back down to zero at 180. It goes all the way down to negative two at 270 and back to 360, and then connect the dots. Now I think they wanted more. They said um, they wanted you to do nine points. That's a little bit of overkill. I'm bad at drawing, and I got it done with one, two, three, four, uh, five points. So one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, they did like. Um, 45, 135, 225, 315, which would be fine. I mean, that would just be 0.7s. So you just added the 0.7s in there, 0.71, basically. But the idea here, the big, the big picture, is that you know that this two pulled it up to two and pulled it down to negative two. Got that negative on there. All right. Okay. Let's take a look at 11, uh, seven non-fundamental sine waves. So this is where it is out of phase. So there's a shift to the right or to the left. And these can be a little trickier. We'll do one of these. Uh, let's look at 55. So 55, we've got y equals the sine of theta plus 90 degrees. So that plus 90 is going to shift the sine wave 90 degrees to the left. Okay, so when we're doing this graph, there's no amplitude change. I'll do the base graph that I just uh, shouldn't have erased the last one I did. I had it up there already. So here, at 0, at 90, at 180, at 70, and at 360. And so what I'm going to do is graph goes up to 1 and down to negative 1. So in red here, this isn't the one that I'm actually doing. Put those points down. And we'll sketch in that sine wave. All right. But now every one of those points is going to have a shift 90 degrees to the left. 90 degrees to the left. So what we're going to do there is... This point is going to be picked up and shifted to here, 90 degrees. This point is going to be picked up and shifted to here, so that's at negative 90. That's at zero now. The 180 is now at 90. The 270 is now at 180. And the 360 is now at 270. So these um, black dots that I have, that's what I have to connect now. And there's our shifted curve. Now it is continuous, it keeps going. It's just we did just one period. So just 0 to 360. Did a shift to the right, or to the left rather. And so now um, plot the points needed to sketch the cycle from negative 90 to 270 and then draw a smooth curve through the plotted points. So that's what we did. That was A and B. All right. Okay, let's take a look at 11.8, sketching harmonics. That is a little tricky also. Let's look at number 60 for that one. So now with harmonics, that means they changed 
the cycle, meaning its period is no longer 360. So it's how, what, however, whatever number they have, that's how many cycles happen between 0 to 360. So here, let me show you what this looks like. So this, 2, affects the amplitude. So it goes up a little higher and down a little lower. 4 affects the period. Like, it's periodic. It happens over and over again. It repeats itself. But 360 divided by 4, it's going to have a period every... 90 degrees, it's going to start a new cycle. All right, so we've got this going on where I usually put in the numbers after the fact because I'm bad at I'm bad at visualizing and sketching. So basically, I want four sine waves for the price of one. So here's what I do: I go like one, two. Uh, three and four. Sorry, I'm really not good at dry, drawing. So this is 360 degrees. And so what we could do is just go, okay, here's 90, here's 180, here's 270, and there's 360. And it went up as high as two and down as low as negative two. And so now, after you get those in, you know, the degrees into the, each cycle, then you can add detail to it. Do you know what I mean? It's sort of like drawing a picture for yourself. Like, um, you, you do a rough sketch, and then you add a little more detail to it, and more detail, and some of, you're very artistic people. I'm not very good at drawing, but... Uh, you know what I mean, then all of a sudden the details come in. It isn't, most people don't just draw really strict details and go like a printer from left to right or something. It's usually, you know, you start with a rougher and then you kind of make it more detailed. So look, half of 90 is 45. So we know that's the halfway point. These are symmetric graphs. Uh, half of that is 22.5. So that's not really a great spot, but that's where it maximizes. And then the minimum would be 22.5 plus 45. So you could add that in your head, 67.5 and then 90. And then, you know, you could then just keep adding 22.5 to everything to fill in the rest of them. Um, it looks like they just want the sketch and that's all they have is 0 to 360. So you don't really need every one of those marked down. All right. Okay, so that would be a fourth harmonic is how we would call that because there's four, four sine waves where normally just one sine wave fits. All right, so let's look at 11.9, sine waves with negative amplitudes, which is kind of a mis... It can't have a, a negative amplitude. Amplitudes are, by definition, positive. They're talking about what if I make this number negative? Then it opens down instead of up. Up, that's all. So it just starts down. But the amplitude would still be 2, even if I had a negative in front of it. So when they say negative amplitudes, that's um, it's not really proper to define a, an amplitude as negative, because amplitudes are the distance they are from the x-axis, so they're never really going to be negative. You can put a negative number in front of it, and that means the peak the um, sine waves would be inverses of one another. All right, so um, take a look at 62. They actually graphed them. They did y equals uh, sine theta and y equals negative sine theta, and they show the, the difference of those two. Um, so let's look at uh, 62. Basically, it says y equals negative sine theta has a blank peak. Well, that would be a negative peak. at least the first one that you encounter. And then y equals um, at 270. Oh, so that was at 90 degrees. All right, and then they said, what happens to it at 270 degrees? So that has a negative peak at 90 degrees and negative sine theta has a positive peak.
at 270. And so what they're talking about here is off of this graph because it's y equals negative sine theta, it goes down and then up. Now, there's no number in front of the theta, so it's just 0 to 360, normal period. There's no multiplier, so it's going up as high as 1 and down as low as negative 1. The difference is it starts going by going downward and then upward. So it's reflected over the x-axis. When you throw a negative in front of there, it reflects over the x-axis. That's true of any graph, whether it's sine or cosine or, or just even y equals x. You know. So... Um, that's considered the inverse um, graph. The two sine waves are inverses in the sense their positive and negative peaks are interchanged. And so usually we stay away from the word inverse when describing these. Um, better to stick with like the word reflection because remember we have inverse trig functions. Um, sine's true inverse, that's the reciprocal which is um, cosecant, and you know, cosine has secant and tangent has cotangent. So that's usually what we stick with when we're talking about inverses in right triangle trigonometry. All right? Okay, cool. Uh, let's look at uh, 67, and they want to uh, write each of these equivalent equations with a negative, uh, and see, again, they say negative amplitude. They really shouldn't couple those words together, either, you know, you could, so for sine theta plus 180 degrees, if we wanted one that opened and started down instead of starting up, we would just say y equals negative for sine theta plus 180. But if I asked you what is the amplitude of this, you would tell me amplitude is 4. If I said, what is the amplitude of this? You would tell me amplitude is 4. Amplitude can't be positive or negative. It is a distance of how far the graph goes from the x-axis. So how far up or how far down. So it's a distance. So since it's a distance, by definition, it's an absolute value. And so whether it, open, whether it starts by going up or starts by going down, the amplitude is 4 in either way, one of these. So for them to say, um, write the equation with a negative amplitude, um, it's not, it doesn't really have a negative amplitude. It just, it, it's reflected over the x-axis. All right? So I just don't want you misusing I know why they're doing it, because they don't want to say reflected over the x-axis, because that sounds too fancy this is supposed to be kind of hands-on but there is no such thing as a negative amplitude so all you have to do is pop a negative in front of it and you will get a reflection of every point on the, on the sine curve all right adding a constant to a sine wave 11 10 all that does is it shifts everything up or shifts everything down so instead of starting like right here it just, if it says plus 5 out here, it just takes the whole thing up 5 and drops it right down there. So that's a, a shifting of the graph, but it doesn't change anything. It is a little weird to draw because you're very used to drawing sines and cosines and tangents, for that matter, off of the x-axis. So to elevate it, you know, and have it kind of levitating five clicks above or something is a little weird. All right, so let's take a look at that 11, um, 10. Uh, let's look at number 69. As you can see, the constant. So they want to know y equals negative 2 plus sine theta crosses the y-axis at y equals, well, that would be at y equals negative 2. So here, just let me show you the, the picture of that. So what that does is normally the sine curve is here. Let me draw it. That's what it normally looks like. What we're going to do is we're going to take this whole thing and shift every point. Let's go point by point. We're going to shift those down two units. So one two units down, that's going to be that point. One, 
two units down. One, two units down. One, two units down. Let's go down to negative three. And one, two units down. And so basically, our sine curve gets picked up and slid down two units and then dropped down. So instead of happening on the x axis where it normally happens, it the whole thing just occurs at negative two. It's a downward shift of every point. All right. Um, adding sine waves, uh, that does some weird stuff. Those, usually we have to use our, our calculators to do that. Um, because you can't just, there isn't like one thing. It just looks like a bit of a hodgepodge. If you take a look at 1111, uh, they have y equals sine theta, y equals sine plus 90. But if they say sine theta plus sine of theta plus 90, that still looks like a sine wave, but it's got a weird amplitude and a weird, um, it's also still cyclic, but it doesn't have like a standard um, period. So, I mean, you can calculate it, it can be calculated, but it's not gonna just be a nice, neat number. So these usually were not, we're not ever sketching these without like um, some electronic help. So we could take a look at uh, 76. They've got them graphed already. And so when you take like two sine theta plus sine two theta and you get kind of this funky, you can tell it's comprised of a sinusoid, but it's a little more jaggedy like this. And so, um, it's not it's not nice and smooth and normal. So uh, one, it's not a sine wave. <laughs> However, it is a periodic function. <laughs> and two, for each value of theta, the value of y is the sum of the y values of the two original sine waves at the value of theta. And so you can add those together, but um, it's no longer a sinusoid. This is not considered a sinusoid. It's a combination of sine waves being added together, and but it's not a sinusoid, or it's not a sine wave is what they basically say. All right, and then 11, 12 cosine waves, well, when we take a look at that, um, it's really just a cosine is a 90 degree shift to the left of a sine wave. So if you wanted to do y equals the cosine of uh, theta, a cosine theta, amplitude times cosine of theta, you could also just do a equals sine of theta plus 90, and it would be the same thing. So it's just a, a shift to the left. Um, so let's take a look here, 78. They want me to write this five cosine theta as a sine. And then you just say, okay, y equals five sine, and then you just say theta plus 90. And you're done. Now that cosine could be expressed as a sine wave. Um, same going the other way, uh, write the cosine wave equation equivalent to this. So they give us for part B of 78, uh, 10 sine of theta plus 90. And really all you're doing there is you're replacing it with uh, y equals 10 cosine of theta. And we're done. All right. So those are related sines and cosines. Ooh, that's a longer video.